Welcome back. So, in the last lecture, uh, we uh, started talking about the field theory, quantum field theory in a space time of zero dimensions. Now, in a zero dimensional space time, it will consist of a single point, and therefore, the theory can or the theory can be specified by the value of the uh, field at that particular point. Now the field value at that particular point can take any random real number and therefore, because randomness creeps in we introduce the concept of probability and the probability distribution for the uh, for the random variable representing the field uh, is given by the expression n exponential minus s of phi, where s of phi, phi is the uh, field variable and s of phi is the action. Um, the action itself uh, in this particular case will consist only of uh, will not consist of any derivative terms, because we cannot define a derivative in a 0 dimensional space time, because there is no metric involved here. We cannot uh, define a metric and therefore, we cannot define a derivative and therefore, the action will not consist of any derivative terms. The normalization constant is given by the second expression here. Now, being a probability distribution, uh, because uh, of the randomness of the field variable, we introduce the probability distribution and the probability distribution when it comes into play, uh, we can identify or we can uh, uh, demarcate or define the probability distribution in a sense uh, by its various movements or its cumulants. These movements of the probability distribution constitute the green functions of the, uh, of the um, field. The generating functional or the generating function of the green functions is given by the expression here. Uh, one uh, summation uh, n uh, summation over n 1 upon n factorial j to the power n g to the power n from which uh, the g n's can be recovered by differentiating and then first differentiating and then substituting j equal to 0. The term j is usually referred to as the source term. The w j uh, is the generating function for the connected green functions and which is defined as the log of the z j which is the generating function for the green functions. And uh, then we have the, the field, um, field uh, function and that is defined as the first derivative of w j and that that is also that can also be expressed as a series or a, or a power series in j um, with the with the coefficients representing the connected green functions then i introduce the concept of a free field uh, free field at 0 plus 0 that means zero space time point uh, 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 zero dimensional space time and uh, we in, uh, we saw that the field would consist the free field would consist of the gaussian action 1 by 2 mu sigma square the no, the normalization constant works out to under root uh, mu upon 2 pi simple gaussian integration uh, and therefore the probability distribution of the field variable uh, turns out to be under root mu upon 2 pi exponential minus 1 by 2 mu sigma square this is clearly a, a normal distribution or a gaussian distribution the generating functional for for the for the green functions uh, when we work it out works out to uh, the expression that is given in the red box and the generating function for the connected green functions works out to the the logarithm of this logarithm of the expression given in the red box the field function on the other hand. So, this, this is the data that was derived that was obtained in the previous uh, uh, lecture with regard to the free field. 
we then introduce the interaction. We introduce the interaction uh, we, uh, as a phi to the four power 4 model, uh, where the interaction term consists of uh, 1 upon 4 factorial that is 1 upon 24 uh, lambda 4 phi to the power 4. This is the interaction term, the term that is given in the red box constitutes the interaction term. And then we made an assumption, we made an assumption that lambda 4 is much small compared to mu and therefore, uh, when we exponentiate the action or the exponentiate the negative of the action, uh, we can read, we can expand this interaction term that is 1 upon lambda 4, uh, 1 upon uh, 4 factorial lambda 4 phi to the power 4 as a power series in phi the field variable. So, uh, let me repeat, we have retained the uh, while exponentiating the negative of the action, we have retained minus mu square as the dominant term as the dominant term and we have not expanded it as a power series, we retained it as an exponential, but we the other the interaction term on the premise that lambda 4 is relatively small, uh, we have expanded a e um, the the second term that is 1 upon 4 factorial lambda 4 uh, phi to the power 4 as a power series in phi exponential series in um, phi. The, uh, the normalization uh, constant for this interaction theory is slightly more involved. Uh, if you work through it, the normalization, the calculation of the normalization factor, there is one important step that needs, uh, that warrants mentioning, that warrants mentioning in fact, uh, uh, very, very prominently uh, and uh, that will also come back to revert to in a, a later point in this lecture today and that is the flipping of this, uh, flipping of this interaction uh, of the, of the summation with the integral. If you look at this carefully, uh, uh, in, uh, before we read the green box, there is uh, from the first step to the second step, uh, we have flipped the summation, we have taken the summation outside the integral. Initially, the summation was naturally inside the integral because the exponential was inside the integral. So, uh, thereafter the summation was taken outside the integral and then the integral was done as is the normal code. This represents a uh, uh, 4kth movement of the uh, Gaussian distribution and therefore, we got the expression in the green box. So, this is the normalization constant. But please note, please note, I reiterate that there is one step involved here, which involves the flipping of the inter uh, of the integral sign with the summation sign. And uh, as far as the generating function for the for the Green's functions were concerned, uh, we proceeded more or less on similar lines. Uh, we again got, uh, uh, we again did the same trick of flipping of the uh, summation and the integral and we got the expression that was given in the green box right at the bottom of your slide. So, this was the, uh, this was the expression for the uh, generating function of the green functions. Um, we worked uh, introducing the normalization, the value of the normalization, we got the green functions uh, as the expression, uh, as the expression given in the bottom equation. The two factors 2 pi upon mu square root cancel out between the numerator and the denominator which represents the, uh, the normalization in a sense and uh, the remaining as it is can be represented as h 2 n upon h 0 h 0 emerges from the normalization and h 2 n is related to g 2 n which is the 2 nth green function of the theory. Now, we come to the Schwinger Dyson equation. So, that was a re brief recap of uh, where we concluded uh, in the last uh, lecture. Now, we take up the Schwinger Dyson equations. The Schwinger Dyson equations are the equations of motions of the green functions and they represent the propagation of the field interactions of a theory. The full system of this the Schwinger Dyson equations completely describe the theory. And they are alternate, uh, uh, and they are in a sense there are alternatives uh, techniques for solving the theory. So, they are alternatives to the standard uh, perturbation theory. Uh, they are more compatible uh, 
uh, uh, for use uh, uh, for investigation of the weak interaction and the strong interaction that is the young mills and the quantum chromodynamics uh, environments. Uh, in these theories you need non perturbative methods uh, to explain certain phenomena like confinement and like uh, chiral symmetry breaking and so on. So, here uh, this uh, the use of uh, the Schwinger Dyson equation becomes more important although yeah, although it is used in QFT um, conventional QFT is also uh, cannot be denied provided we are able to solve the Schwinger Dyson equations. So, these are some advantages of the Schwinger Dyson equations uh, they are contain continuum in a sense and therefore, they can be <laughs> used uh, for the ultraviolet and infrared reg regions also. Uh, lattice theories on the other hand uh, pose a problem when we try to investigate the ultraviolet and infrared regions. Uh, the uh, chiral limit is easily accessed in this theories uh, which is again a problem in lattice theories and the, the, uh, the HD equations the Schwinger Dyson equations form an exact theory in, in themselves. So, that is another advantage compared to perturbation theory. Well, uh, to arrive at the Schwinger Dyson equations, we consider the action as a power series in the in the field variable. We gen take a general approach and we write the action as a power series in the field variable phi uh, that is given in the red box, taking the derivative and um, redefining the index, we get the expression that is given in the bottom right hand side of your slide summation 1 upon k factorial lambda k plus 1 phi to the power k. This is the first derivative of the action corresponding to the action as phi is equal to summation 1 upon k factorial lambda k phi to the power k. Now, if you take the derivative the p th derivative of z j what happens? The p th derivative of z j acting on z j I have written z j explicitly here n integral exponential minus s phi plus uh, j phi and d phi uh, this is the value of z j. So, if you differentiate this uh, with respect to j what happens is this differential acts on the j phi term this differential goes inside the integral because the integral is with respect to phi and the differential is with respect to j. So, the we can transpose the integral or we can flip the integral inside the uh, we can flip the differential and the integral operators and the differential can go inside the integral and then it can operate on the j phi. So, it pulls down a factor of phi. The net result is that if, if I differentiate uh, z j with respect to j once I pull down one factor of phi due to the due to the derivative operator acting on j phi. So, uh, operating once I get phi operating twice I get phi square and so on. So, this is the way uh, you generate the, the green functions by uh, operating uh, um, by differentiating the uh, generating function or the path integral. So, uh, from um, from the previous slide we have got uh, a stretch phi is equal to this expression in the green box there in the red box I am sorry. Uh, therefore, minus j plus h dash uh, uh, del by del j of z j. Now, a stretch of phi is given by this expression. So, clearly a stretch of d by d j will be given by the expression that is in the square bracket of the second equation on your slide and this operates on z j. Now, when this the first expression with z j is what is given uh, in the in the third first term of the third equation. So, that is not an issue and the uh, the second e expression when you look at it this uh, d upon d j acting on z j as we have shown in the previous slide uh, you can see it here uh, d upon d j uh, uh, operating on the z j pulls down appropriate number of factors the num um, the order of differentiation pulls down the appropriate number of factors of phi into the integral. 
So, that is precisely what is being done here. We are pulling down appropriate numbers of phi and then of course, this is summation this summation can be taken inside the integral there, there is no variable involved here and therefore, I can attach the summation to the uh, to the field variable and I get the second second equation on the bottom slide. So, uh, and just to reiterate uh, my uh, this s s you see s dash d by d j is a power series in d by d j when it operates on z j each of the power power terms or uh, terms of the series uh, uh, contains z by d by d j to a certain power and that that when operates on z j pulls down the uh, the same num same power of phi into the integral that is precisely what is happening in the bottom term the last term on the on the slide so this is where we uh, this is what we have from the previous slide now if you look at this this expression in the red box if you look at this expression in the red box it is nothing but s dash of phi it is nothing but s dash of phi simply s dash of phi nothing else and there is no other change um, that uh, the rest of the expression has been repeated as it, as it is only the expression in the red box has been substituted by s dash of phi so keep taking these two terms together what i get is uh, and, and taking this minus sign outside what i get is j minus s dash of phi inside the integral uh, I can take this uh, j inside the integral and s dash phi is already inside the integral. So, I can collect the two terms j and s dash of phi and the rest is nothing but z j. So, this is what we have with the minus sign of course, outside. Now, comes a very important step. Now, comes a very important step. Uh, uh, this is what we have from the previous slide the first expression the expression in the red box is what we have from the previous slide. Now, I can write that in the form of the expression that in the in the second red box uh, d by d phi minus s phi because uh, this is s dash phi this minus sign when you take it uh, take it together with s dash you get minus s phi the two things this first of all this minus sign going inside and s dash being written as d by d phi nothing else and uh, j is being written as d by d phi of j phi. So, the two expressions are equivalent they have substituted the second one for the first one. Now, if you look at this exponential exponential of this minus uh, s phi plus j phi d minus s phi plus j phi upon j phi can be is nothing but is nothing but the derivative of d by uh, derivative of exponential minus s phi d by d phi. In other words, if you take the derivative of the expression that is given in the in the third red box, you simply get the expression in this in this second equation uh, d by d phi of exponential minus s phi plus j phi is nothing but exponential minus s phi plus j phi d by d phi minus s phi plus j phi and that is precisely what is the expression we have in the second equation on your slide. So, uh, now this this expression which is there in the red box can be written as a as a total derivative uh, total derivative d of exponential minus s phi plus j phi uh, and being a total derivative when you integrate it the integral and uh, integrate it within the limits minus infinity to infinity clearly the integral will depend only on the on the limits of integration and because we assume that the the, the integrand uh, vanishes uh, uh, sufficiently fast enough uh, so that its value uh, at minus and plus infinity both are are uh, zero or are negligible uh, therefore the value of this integral also is also uh, approximately zero we have the expression on the the first expression as equal to 0 the first expression minus integral d phi uh, this expression this first uh, 
exponential minus s phi uh, plus j phi into s dash phi minus j. Uh, if when you integrate this, you get zero, which is which is shown in the in the green box at the bottom of your slide. So we now revert to where we started. We started with s dash d by d j minus j uh, into uh, z operating on z j. Uh, let me go back and show you, we moved quite a bit. Yeah, it is here in this uh, red box, second red box minus j plus s dash d, d by d j uh, operating on z j. So, uh, this whole expression we find that this whole expression is equal to 0. And that's, that, that gives us the equation which is the Schwinger Dyson equation which is written in the dark green box at right at the bottom of your slide when you simplify it the, the expression at which you replace the integral with z j and uh, you simplify the expression a bit uh, you get the result uh, which is shown in the d dark green box at the bottom of your slide and which is the Schwinger Dyson equation for the generating function for the green function for z j. Of course, in the case in the theory with k fields, uh, the same thing can be generalized extended and we get the result which is shown in your uh, uh, in the slide uh, which is here. Now, for the given phi 4 field, for the phi 4 field that we are uh, considering uh, uh, s phi is equal to 1 by 2 mu uh, with the action 1 by 2 mu sigma square plus 1 upon 4 factorial lambda 4 phi 4. This is the action, this is the interaction field that we are considering for the moment. This is called the phi to the power 4, 4, 4 field. So, we have s dash phi is equal to this mu of phi plus 1 by 3 factorial lambda 4 as simple differentiation and this gives us s dash d by d j of z, uh, into z j is equal to mu into d, uh, for uh, phi we substitute d by d j uh, and then operating on z j plus 1 by 6 lambda 4 d by d j whole cube into z j. And so, this is our Schwinger Dyson equation. Uh, for the phi 4 field for the phi 4 field this is the earlier equation that we got was for a general field and a general field which was ex which was expanded as a power series in the uh, field variable the action of that field was a power series expansion in the field variable now we are considering the specific case of the phi 4 field and phi 4 field has the a Schwinger Dyson equation that is given in the green box at the bottom of this slide. Now, now we come to the Schwinger Dyson equation for the field function. Uh, recall the field function is given by the derivative of the of the w j that w is the uh, generating function for the connected green functions. In other words, it is given by z uh, 1 upon z j into z dash j. Uh, or log of uh, yeah the derivative of log of z j also either uh, all the three expressions are equivalent in fact so we have z j uh, this we've already seen this expression we've seen this will be required in the in next few slides so we um, i have rewritten it uh, phi j as i mentioned just now is the first derivative of the first derivative of the generating function for the connected green function. So, and the connected green function is given by the log of z j. So, clearly phi of j is given by d of t j log of z j which is equal to 1 of z j into d z j upon d j. So, differentiating this expression, if you differentiate this expression. Uh, um, z, 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 dzj upon dj, you pull down a factor of phi as we have discussed a number of times, you pull down a factor of phi. And if you look at this expression now, so in a sense what we have is simply the expected value of phi. So, 
the expected value of phi, but the difference is that the expected value of phi is calculated in an environment that is in the presence of a factor j which represents the source. So, what we can say here is simply that the, the field function is nothing but the expected value uh, of, the, of the field variable in the presence of sources. The Schwinger Dyson equation for the field operator phi j, the field function phi j is given by the expression in your green box, first green box, where E j is the unit operator, E j here is the unit operator. For p equal to 0, if you can clearly see the equation is trivial because this it becomes 1. So, the right hand side is z j, the left hand side is also z j. Uh, because uh, the no derivative will operate uh, with p equal to 0 and therefore, z j is equal to the right hand side also which is also z j. Let us see what happens for p equal to 1. For p equal to 1, the right hand side becomes the expression in the blue box. Uh, the right hand side becomes an expression in the blue box, which uh, the I, I can write the, the uh, unit operator as z j, z inverse j and then I proceed to um, operate the, the expression in the square brackets on z j, z inverse j. Let us see what I get. Uh, the first term that I get is d z j upon d j into e j. Uh, that is the first term when I multiply z j into 1 upon z j into d z j upon d j the, uh, into this expression in the green box that is what I get. The second expression I get uh, z j operating um, with uh, d by d j operating on z j, z inverse j. Um, so, that gives me derivative of z j with z, z inverse j minus this z j and this z j, z j square uh, and the derivative of uh, z inverse j with respect to j is 1 upon z j square derivative of z j upon z j. Now, the net result of this expression is clearly derivative of z j upon z j which is the left hand side for p equal to 1. So, the equation holds for p equal to 1 as well. Let us see what happens for p equal to 2. For p equal to 2, we can write this expression. Uh, the, uh, we get the expression uh, or st we start with the expression given in the red box and we can write this expression as the second equation simply by introducing z inverse j, z j which is the unit operator in between the two factors of p uh, out of two factors of phi j, uh, two factors which are there in the square brackets. So, I repeat uh, the first factor in the square bracket uh, and then I get the second factor in the square bracket. In between the two I have imposed z inverse j, z j which is nothing but the unit operator. So, now, I, I pick out the term in the blue box z j phi j plus del by del j, j e j. This expression is nothing if you look at it, this expression is nothing but the um, Schwinger Dyson equation for p equal to 1 and that gave us that gave us the result del z j upon del j. In other words, what I am left with is the whole first term, first part of the term z j into phi j plus d by d j z inverse j. This is the first part of the term. This whole term I have got still pending and this, this term in the blue box gives me d z j upon d j from the previous example for uh, previous uh, uh, proof of for p equal to 1. Now, let us, uh, uh, let us simplify this expression uh, z j into phi j into z inverse j uh, uh, operating on this will give me what will give me deriv uh, derivative of z j with respect to z j uh, because this is this phi j is nothing but 1 upon z j into the derivative of z j. So, I can write this phi j as 1 upon z j into derivative of z j. 
So, this 1 upon z j into derivative z j when this z j uh, we get the uh, unit function here and um, z dash j or derivative z j this expression we have it as the first term and z inverse j I get from here and this derivative of z j I get from this expression. So, this this accounts for the first term the first term of the red box and uh, as far as the second term is concerned uh, when you multiply z j uh, into derivative of z inverse j derivative of z j upon <laughs> derivative of z j. So, this uh, term in the red box is what we get for p equal to 2 a little bit more of simplification. Uh, when I simplify this further when I simplify this further what I get is the first expression is uh, as it is is retained as it is. The second expression I carry out the derivative the second I carry out the derivative of the second expression uh, this uh, derivative of z in uh, inverse j gives me 1 upon uh, uh, z j square derivative of z j into z j and this uh, derivative of z j remains as it is this is the second term the, this will drop out z j and z inverse z j will drop out and I will have derivative of z j acting on uh, derivative uh, of z j giving me the second derivative of z j. Now, these two, two terms cancel out I get second derivative of z j with respect to j. So, uh, it, the expression holds or the equation holds for p equal to 2 as well. Uh, uh, the rest you know we can prove by mathematical induction we, the rest uh, we can prove by mathematical induction uh, we will continue from here after the break. Thank you.